Costa from the SF branch. And exciting news for 2021. We are going live four days every week, 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And SF Garnish is doing the Wednesday, West Coast Wednesdays. This is our test week. So um, this is an opportunity to meet us and meet the larger community. If you go to our links, you can check out the ways that you can get online and in-person lessons worldwide. We have eight locations. Um, I'll, I'll get into more on the websites in a little bit, but just wanted to welcome you guys. We're gonna get into some sound design with Ableton Live 10 Suite. And I just wanna do some um, different effects to um, show, I guess, the larger community what we're gonna hopefully do uh, four days a week from 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. If you guys are in New York or London, um, we do have locations in those areas, even Tokyo. So just find out, change the time, and uh, tune in, because we're going live every Wednesday, West Coast Wednesdays. We also have Mondays, Wednesdays, Saturdays, Sundays at the moment. Same time every week, live on these channels. So please like it and subscribe. We'll get right into it. This is an Ableton Live set. Um, but before I go into any sound design in our digital audio workstation, I'm gonna go into how can we get the best audio from a vocal mic, whether it be something here or a clip-on mic, which is what I'm using right here. And I just wanna go into what the EQ can do to, to change the audio quality. And, <coughs> excuse me, um, let's go ahead and jump into this scene, this is showing the push two, but I have an iPad in front of it, which is connected to my X32 rack. And that's how we are doing a live stream to you guys. And I'm coming out of channel 25, and I'm just gonna go over here and change some of the settings, okay? And um, if you guys don't know the X32 rack, it's super easy to customize the color change up and make it look like, let's say, is there a little image of me too? Okay, there's a guy. And then I'm going to go ahead and just put vocal one clip on. All right, so I know that this is my mic. Now, this is gonna show up on your channel strip with that symbol, so it's pretty easy to see. I can go into EQ, and as you can see, I roll off my lows um, let's go into that right there. Around 64 hertz and below is being rolled off pretty sharp. And then I also boosted my highs, or my mid-range actually, just a little bit of a notch, about two and a half dB. And it looks like the frequency range is about 1.4K. So between 1K and 2K, it has that, that gentle slope right there. Um, Let's see if I can show you guys Oops. this next thing here. All right, this is obviously the image that we're gonna be using just to be talking and see the logos of the SF Garnish branch and what we're doing way down below the West Coast Wednesdays. Um, oh, I don't wanna play that again. Okay, here we are back in with our EQ. Okay, that's what I want. I wanna have a little image so I can wave to you guys and talk to you guys more personally while I'm doing this little device over here. Okay, so what's happening here is when I change this, you should be able to hear the difference in my voice. All the high end up here is actually something that I, I might kinda want, especially if I'm a, a vocalist with a higher frequency. Um, so if I kind of, I think I'm realizing a little bit higher and then my width might be a little bit better to be rolled out a little bit. So um, I'm going to turn off one thing over here really quick and play you guys a track in the meantime. If you guys have any questions, please um, leave some comments and we will answer them as quickly as possible. There's a couple different branches um, live streaming this. The SF branch, 
um, YouTube, and let's say the, the larger branch, right, which is the, um, the garnish all. Let's see if this is coming through. There we go. All right, you guys can kind of hear that a little bit. This is a track that we're going to be working on today. All right, it's pretty quiet for you all because I want to be able to talk over it in the future, but for now, I could actually turn this up a little bit. So as you can see, I have a separate send. It's um, on the X32, it's gonna be five. Five is my send out to my USB one, two. So when I turn this up, you guys should hear it louder. All right? All right, so you guys should be hearing a little bit better. Let's go ahead and watch this track playing. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so you guys can kind of see some of the effects I'm using. And uh, let's see here. All right. There's the track. All right, here we go. One of the things that I want to do is actually create sound effects with you guys on the West Coast Wednesdays based on kitchen sounds, sounds that you can find in your kitchen and create some high-end um, hi-hat sounds, little trinkles and tricklets coming out. So I think you guys can hear Let's bring that up even more. track for you guys and what we want to do today is get into just some ideas on what you guys might want to learn in the coming year with your digital audio workstation how your audio interface connects to the software and then also how to do the sound design okay so there's a lot of different tools everything can be wireless these days and the sound quality is phenomenal um, a lot of people say that the preamps in some analog gear, the old school gear, um, is better than the digital world. That's a discrepancy um, of counting ones and zeros that are so minute that um, a lot of our ears can't even pick up on it. Um, our whole studio in uh, Soul Graffiti Studios, based in North Oakland, is 100% digital, and we're using plugins for kind of emulating the analog gear that we used to use. We used to use the two inch tape and so forth. So what I have here is just a older iPad that was connecting to my XR18. This allows me to multi-track from our other rooms at our studio. Um, so a drummer can actually track in, we're using CAT6 cable to connect the different rooms. And also CAT6 cable can also connect our HDMI and our video as well, if you guys are getting into that stuff. I'm gonna get into the Push 2, which is an instrument that Ableton has created specifically for its software. It is the only instrument that they have created, and it is amazing. There's a lot of other instruments that um, are similar. Um, the MPC is one of them, Machine, a lot of, um, here's, I'll give you another example here of the Akai MPK Mini, right? These are all 
MIDI controllers, right? So you're pressing these buttons here and it's controlling your, your um, software, your keyboard. So what happens with the Push 2 is it has a grid. It's not a keyboard, but this grid can be changed into Session View. And Session View gives us the opportunity to see different things um, created. Like each row is going to be like verse, chorus, bridge, even intro, outro. And it's a really quick way for you to do sound design. Um, and mixing and mastering, I mostly do in arrangement view as a final. But one special thing that a lot of people don't know in Ableton is that you can switch between arrangement view and session view back and forth and use the, the best tools of both worlds simultaneously um, or copy and paste back and forth for different parts of your production. So in one song, I might actually go back and forth, I don't know, tens of times um, to, to create the exact sound that I want. When you're looking at this file right here, this is arrangement view and this is session view from my screen. And I've just tracked everything. I put one group here. This is actually an upgrade of the 10 suite. Before this, you couldn't do it with Ableton, but it's definitely a game changer. You can group tracks and you can even group tracks within the group. Okay, so I have this all group, which is all the tracks that I have. And then within there, I have pitch instruments. Um, when, I, when I say pitch instruments, I mean ones that have pitches. Um, and then I have my drums. When I make things red, I color code things that I'm actually not using anymore. And I can also zero them out so, that, that, so they don't take any more CPU. When I say zero out, I go back into arrangement view. Let's go back to those tracks. We'll zoom out and go down to these tracks that are red. Okay, and I open up those tracks. I'm gonna make sure that this is, when I click this up here, it actually engages all these tracks to play. So now I'm able to play within arrangement view instead of session view. And what I want to do is just take these tracks that I'm not using, all of them, and press the zero key. And right away, that deactivates them. The really cool thing about deactivating a track is if you're short on CPU on your computer, you can freeze tracks or deactivate tracks to save your CPU and RAM usage. So this is another track that is all red because I'm not using it anymore. It's just for the beginning of it. And I'm going to zero that out. All right. So let's go ahead and just get into a little bit more production. Like I said before, this is going to be going on every Wednesday, West Coast Wednesdays. We're going to get into a lot of different things. Um, not only Ableton, but Logic and Pro Tools, and have guest artists coming in. We already have Moldover, an amazing artist using Ableton as a guest. We have um, Nate Hendricks coming in. He's actually our first guest. So if you guys are interested in guesting or commenting and have questions, please get a hold of us, sf at garnishmusicproduction.com. Um, and I'm actually going to play you guys a little clip here because this is the larger conglomerate. Thank you, Dave Garnish, for creating this and sharing it with me so I can put this up. Let's see if this plays here. So those are our websites and ways to connect with us, SF Garnish and Garnish Central, right? And actually, one more thing that we should name here is that we are creating this network. It's going to be the Garnish Music Network, where we have London going live one day. We have New York going live another day, LA, San Francisco, which is our Wednesday, um, and a few other locations coming up really soon. 
So stay tuned on our channels. Um, I see a few of you guys watching on Facebook and our Twitch channel. Thanks for tuning in. Um, I'm actually not on those channels right now, but when I do go live um, next week, I will be on there reading your comments and taking requests um, and interacting with you guys. Today, I'm just gonna go into just a little bit more around what I see as a really nice setup for Ableton and sound design and getting things going with the song. This is something that really took about only two and a half hours to create. I was able to go um, wirelessly, put my wireless headphones on, um, and I had an iPhone and an iPad. The iPad was the control, which I was showing you guys earlier. I'll show you guys again really quick. It was this control right here. And I brought this into my drum room with my phone with using the, the, the program Touchable. And I was then able to record the drum tracks for this on a real drum set. And then I brought that sound of the drum tracks and changed it to MIDI and then sampled them into um, using better samples than my own drum, drums. Because I'll be honest with you, the, they're not the best drums. The cymbals, um, the heads, et cetera. And uh, Ableton comes with all of these amazing packs of sounds. Uh, I'll just give you an example right here. So I would go in and I've put my favorites up here and I have my drums located right here. And these are all the different sounds. I want to make sure you guys are hearing this. I don't think you guys are yet. All right, so I wired this to a different channel, actually. So this is similar to a live show. You don't want this playing unless, like you don't want this playing to the audience unless you really send it to them. So I just brought that up in mix five, which is going out to you guys. And these are all the different drums you can pick from. There's also ones that I've created myself in here that I've also saved. That There's not a, a demo up front, but um, it has a mother drum and a gourd that's being hit and mic'd up really nicely. <clears throat> All right, so what I did is I brought the drums in and changed them to MIDI right here. You can see kick to MIDI. Right, and that is one of the hits that's going on right here. Now, I actually, once you create a whole group, right, I had this one called Drum Breaks, which is actually me playing live drums. It's actually the only thing I kept is me playing the live drum break. Everything else I copied, I selected just like this, and I went or duplicated, sorry, Command D. And right away, that duplicates a whole nother track. So let's see if we have it here, yep. So we have drum breaks and drum breaks. And then from there, I was able to change it to MIDI, and I'll show you guys that. This is all kind of pre-done here, so I'm not gonna go through all of it. In our classes, we go step by step through this. The the Ableton 101, 201 short course is amazing. We have teachers that are answering questions. The class sizes are small, between two to 12 people. And you can really um, get a customized, individualized class going on and learn from your cohort as well. So as you can see here, these are all MIDI tracks up in this area. And This, actually, this pad kit, I'm just going to solo this for you guys for a second so you can hear this. It's pretty quiet. So a little bit louder. You guys can hear that. So 
So this is really unique where instead of having to go into individual each track and change to MIDI and then um, have all your individuals, I actually brought in a kit and while listening to myself play this beat, I played it on the push two, okay? So this push two over here, when I go to this instrument, let's make sure that we're in the same instrument. Drums all, all right, we're in this one now, and we're in notes. So what we're doing here is we're seeing whatever is highlighted. So this is the snare is just hitting on the three. Three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, right? And let's just, I'll keep this on loop for a little while so you can kind of see what's going on. Um, but what I end up doing is I eventually break this back out after I've compiled it into one MIDI for this phase. Then in the mix down, maybe sending off to Oz Fritz from high velocity or something, I would break it down so he has individual control of each of these instruments. Maybe that's like the last thing I'll probably do today. Uh, so this is looping right now. As you can see, I turned on the loop bracket up here in Ableton. And then on the push two, we are looking at just this one instrument. And then if you press shift and that instrument, you can change the color, right? So that's the kick. Let's make the snare something else. These are the ones we're using. Okay, if you press select, you can switch to a different instrument without it playing. Okay, so if you're playing a live show or something and you're going through different programs, you're gonna want to be able to get into specific sounds without actually making it hit. All right, so we are in record mode, right? You also have repeat function here. So this is where you could actually hold it down and it just will repeat that sound. Okay, that's actually one way to, to play a beat right in tempo. Is using the repeat function. This is on eighth notes. But if you want to go to 16th notes, it could be a little bit faster. So that's repeat mode. What I did for this, because this is actually my, my click track, I'll play this for you guys really quick, is in 4-4, but the beat is in 6-8, because this is an Afro-Cuban beat. So this is where the grid and, and what this feel is was really challenging to find out because um, when you quantize things, it puts it into grid to the 4-4 four, four, or, or dividing that equally, right, in halves, 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 halves. And when you have this 6-8 over 4 with a slight feel change, I found out that actually it was like 5.25 or 10.47 um, off from the grid. So this was actually had, this had to be done by hand and then just pasted across, duplicated across for the track. But you can kind of hear the contrast of the click. Right, so the click is that straight. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. So I was super stoked to kind of go into how do you quantize Afro Cuban beat and what is so special about this style of music? And what I'm finding is that um, you can't quite quantize it. This is um, the, uh, the human experience of playing the drums is is prevalent 
So I'm a fan of flamenco, the bulerias is in 12-8, which is three over four, right? Three times 12. And the six, eight over four, four is kind of similar, right? Where the three and the four are, are counterplaying click and the beat. So let's go ahead and bring in another instrument. You notice down here, this is in the other view, which is session view. Okay, when it says half right here, that's not saying that this is soloed. It's saying something inside there is soloed, something inside the drums. I scroll over and this drum track is soloed. Okay, now I have a reverse snare in here. That's the next thing I'm gonna bring in. And if, you, if I just click on this without pressing command and click, it's just gonna solo that alone. Okay, I'll just take off the click here. But what I want is both of these on at the same time. So I wanna do command and click. So I have both the reverse snare and the beat. I'm gonna bring in some of the Afro-Cuban percussion And there it is. So that is all of the drums. Now on the bottom left hand corner over here, you can kind of see the MIDI device and where it's playing. On the snare, I am hearing reverb, but that's actually because the entire track has reverb. When I start customizing this, more, I'm gonna to want to be able to put reverb just on that snare and take it off the kit completely. So this is something where I'm gonna purposely take off all my reverbs. I have three reverbs on, A, B, C. This is a 1.2 millisecond, 2.5 and 3.2 millisecond reverbs. And I'm gonna go ahead and open up with this upper left-hand corner, this little triangle. This is all of my sound bakes and effects and instruments. And let's just go to a basic reverb. So within your reverb right here, you can drop down and see there's a bunch of presets, right? Down here, really popular ballad reverb, cathedral. I'm just gonna use the basic one, which is just here. And what I'm gonna do is drag it directly into that snare little square, what's gonna happen is it knows to put this right after the snare in that chain to where it's not on any instrument of that drum rack except the snare. If I click on snare two, it's not there. When I click on this snare it is, it's not there again for the other instrument. So let's try this out. We'll just kind of solo just this one snare Actually, let's get all these solos off. There we go. So you go to where you can hear it. I don't need so much low reverb, mostly the high. So I'm gonna make that EQ a little bit different. A little more reflection, diffusion. All right. So now that kick is just a little bit more clean because I didn't need so much reverb on that part of it. But I am still wanting a reverb on the high end and actually it might serve to use this same one. So I'm going to copy this, Command C, I highlighted this reverb, and then I click on my ride, and I click inside the bracket here, and Command V, and there it is, it just dropped into one. The other ride, so I had two different rides, or one's a, there we go. So now I have that high end reverb and 
I can even put more on the rides because I don't really don't need too, too much on the snare in comparison. And the kick now, if I scroll over, you guys can see this a little better. Let's solo the kick. It's super clean. All right. So one more thing I'm going to do here is go into my favorite drum effect. And it's in my effects right over here, my saved best of. And there's these drum buses. And they have all these different cool effects. I like going in and just customizing my own. Now what I'm going to do is put this across the entire drum rack. If I put this across the entire drum rack, I don't want to put it right here because it'll go into the kick. I'm going to put it outside of this and it becomes here a spot for all the drums. Right away it got a little more beefy and that's because this drum bus is has the option to drive it, crunch it, make certain frequencies boom out more and it creates some really smart compressions and limiters built into this really simple effect. This is something you might see on an analog gear, just a few knobs that are really going to make your drums sound that much better. All right, I'm going to go ahead and make a little more boom here. Bring a little more. There we go. All right. So I'll just turn that up quite a bit so you guys can hear a little bit better. Now you can notice that this is booming around 50 hertz. It's pretty small on the screen. Apologize about that. But this 50 hertz right here. I'm going to bring that up. You can actually tune this to the song you're in, purposely detune it, right, to make it really stand out more. So right away, that's sounding pretty big. All right, you can also crunch it up a little bit. Little drive. You can, ch you can change how much of that drive, soft, medium, or hard. The hard drive is really just pushing more of that crunchy gain, compressing it a little more deeply. That's another pushing compression. I can actually back this out now. Take the loop off. So I noticed that in the drive and the crunch, it's kind of pushing up the high end of the hi-hats, and I'm, um, I'm not wanting that, really. I'm wanting mostly to affect the low end, the bass frequencies, that 40 uh, hertz all the way up to about 600 hertz, which is what that boom is doing right here in this chain. So, yeah, a lot of customizations going on. This program can be daunting, but once you get it down, it is the best 
Digital Audio Workstation, in my opinion. Um, I do use Pro Tools and Logic as well, and we also teach those. Um, if In regard to price, it is um, pretty expensive and compared to Logic. If you're just wanting to get something really good for creating hip hop beats and simplicity and having really nice built-in plugins that are easy to use, Logic could be the choice for you. Um, we're teaching both the Logic 101 201 and the Ableton 101 201 starting every month or so. So if you guys want to check that out, go to sf.garnishmusicproduction.com or edu garnishmusicproduction.com and there's some great discounts going on right now um, I think starting next week we will actually put up some codes so whoever's watching this can get actually an extra little discount on top of the regular discounts <coughs> excuse me again all right so here's a song I'm zooming out by just pressing the minus button pretty simple having your shortcut codes down it's so helpful in your Digital Audio Workstation. So that's something you should probably try and start memorizing is the how to get around. Um, this might look a lot different than what you're used to if you've seen other arrangement view DAWs. And that's because Ableton has everything aligned on the right hand side, whereas Logic has all of these record mute functions on the left hand side, which is similar to Pro Tools. Um, the reason why, this is just my guess, honestly, is that this pops out on the left-hand side, which is such an important part of the system, which is all of your effects pop out over here, right? Um, in Logic, it actually has to divide the screen in half and pops out down below. And I just really like how that's laid out. And if you do want more control of seeing like the visual of the decibel level of each track, you can press Tab and go over to the other view, which is session view. Session view not only has the grid above that has the option to record individual scenes, right, and create your intro, outro, verse, chorus, bridge sections, but you also have all of he here is a visual of where your master volume is over here on the right hand side in all individual volumes. Now the reason why a lot of these volumes are below zero is because in mixing mode you don't want to listen to things pushed too much because you want to open up room for the speakers to really hear, let you hear all the things to come through. So what I did with this song actually is I put some white noise on. This is something that one of our teachers went through in our Ableton 101 201 course. And this track literally is just here for, for white noise. Actually, which one might it be? Now, these are all risers, actually. So what I'm going to have to do is create a new white noise. And it's as easy as going to instruments and putting operator in a new track. All right, if you don't know what operator is, is it's a MIDI device that can really be any instrument, right? You can make any sound you want using operator. So I'd use command shift T and it will create a new MIDI track to the right of wherever I'm at. And then I'm gonna drop in operator, oops. I'm dropping an operator right next to it. You can actually just drop it into the open space, and that's another way to do it. So I just missed. Anyway, so here is my track. If you, whoops, I just started this here while I went over. But so this is operator, and right away it's in a mode using the push two. Pretty loud. I'm going to bring that volume down. If you want to go in and change it using this mode, you're going to want to slide over to wherever you are, which is operator, and bring that volume down. It's really cool to be able to work completely off from Ableton and have a physical device to work from, whether it be the Push 2 or any MIDI device. Um, the, the way that I like Push 2 is it really can take you away from 
the computer screen and every functionality of adding tracks and adding devices can be right here within this program. So in the operator, I want to just change a few things inside of it. And that is the waveform specifically. So I want to change the waveform. Right now it's a sine wave. And up here, I'm going to change this all the way over. Let's go to the very end of this. Okay, noise W, that's white noise. And the short form of that is N-O-W. So it's showing that. When I click this, it's just white noise. Something that is interesting about this is that the white noise itself can be used as a riser or it can be used as a tool to create noise at a nominal level, right, at zero. And what you do is it, each individual track, you solo out your white noise and the individual track that you're working on and start at zero and just bring it up to where you can barely hear it. And that's the point of where we get to with these right here. So I brought these channels down to where I could just barely hear it. Tom one, Tom two are pretty low, you can see. Right, the, the overheads are a little bit higher. And that's doing this white noise test. This isn't obviously the final mix, but what it does is when you play it back, you know that you're not um, peaking your system, right? And you have a lot more headroom on your master channel over here. The reason why you want that headroom is that you want room to mix and master. At the ending phase, you're then gonna mix it probably at that negative six dB or negative 12 even between that. And then you master it really pushing up close to that zero so that really it gets the most um, effect when somebody turns the knob on whatever device they're listening from. So the white noise trick is a super cool trick. Obviously we'll go more into it in the 36 hour courses. And um, like I said before, this is just a run through before we really get going next week. This week is primarily just a test run where we are making sure you guys can hear my voice, the system of the Digital Audio Workstation, and eventually the guests that we have on. We have a few of our teachers coming up here as guests, including Nate Hendricks and Moldover. And we really look forward to even talking with some of you guys via our Zoom channel live about either your mix or something to do with sound design, because that's what we're teaching here at Garnish Music Production. And we really look forward to meeting you guys personally. Um, it's really amazing to work with an international organization, which is what Garnish is. We have eight locations, but be, but be so personalized at the same time. Each location has teachers working with two to six students at a time, generally, all the way up to 12 sometimes. But our class, our average class size in SF is about three to four students. So student to teacher ratio, it's almost like individual classes. One of the benefits too is that you almost get these individual classes and you're learning from your few peers as well, but your price is super affordable on, on top of that, right? Um, if you were going to an individual one-on-one -on -one lesson with, with one of our teachers, it would cost, I think, four times the amount of per hour for the classes, and you're able to do it um, at a fraction of that. So if, if you want to know more about Garnish Music Production, please check out our links and check out what we're doing. Um, this is just a general page here, so you guys can kind of check out what we're about to do. West Coast Wednesdays is 11 to 12, and we're the SF branch. Um, if, if we really get into it, there's a lot of branches of music, of Garnish music. And I'm just gonna, I might as well just give a little demonstration here of how we can even get into teaching you guys and showing you guys around our website. Um, let's just go into this one right here. All right. 
So here we are. We have the SF Garnish branch. Um, so when you're in here, you can learn a lot just on the, on the main page, sf.garnishmusicproduction.com. Let me bring this down so you guys can actually see that a little bit. And you can see that you can just drop down this menu to see that not only do we have these short courses of 36 hours, but we have the producer program, 120 hours, and the academy, 430 hours. That's including studio time that you're working on your music. You're not only learning sound design, mixing and mastering, and your digital audio workstation, but you're learning theory and the ability to go through, excuse me, one sec. There's a call coming through your computer over here. All right, I'll make sure that doesn't happen next time. Um, where was I? So what you learn is not only about the music portion of the electronic music production, but you're also learning some theory and some sound design and then going into the business side of the PR and like how do you make your own EPK and start booking your own gigs and getting your press release out there. So that's in the larger courses of the producer and academy program. And so if you want to learn more about it, you're welcome to email us and go to our contact page. On the SF branch, it shows our location right here in Oakland. Let's see here. We're right here across the street from Paradise Cafe. It's funny how it, it doesn't actually have, do I zoom in, does it show us? It normally shows us. We gotta figure out what happened with Google, but we are in this building. This is Paradise Cafe right here. And we're right across the street in this, this location right here. Oh, here we are. We're in this area. So right by the place for sustainable community. This is Rock the Bike, Soul Graffiti Studios, and SF Garnish Music Production. It normally says it. I'm going to have to look into that. It's always something new to do with tech. And on this page, you can also see ways of how you can stay with Airbnb, how to meet the local community, and um, also how you can even do classes online with us. Um, right? Our online classes links are right here, and there are discounts on our page. There's also the edu.garnishmusicproduction.com, which is the larger conglomerate um, website. And these are all the locations worldwide that you can click on any of these, right? We're the San Pablo, Oakland branch. Look at this. Here's Hong Kong, Berlin, Tennessee, Nashville, Tennessee, or near Nashville, Tennessee, Brentwood, uh, Miami, Florida, New York, Los Angeles, and London. So check it out when you can. We'd be happy to teach you about sound design. And we're almost done here. This is our hour, 11 a.m. to 12 noon every Wednesday, West Coast Wednesdays. We're going to be talking music. We're going to be talking detailed things. Tomorrow, um, next week, we're going to be talking about just the high end. How do you make the hi hat? get people moving and dancing? Where are the accents? How do you create a live drummer feel in the electronic realm, right? Like here we are with the push two, and when you go into a new instrument, let's just say I add a device. So add a, I'm gonna add a track, a whole new track. And I'm gonna go to MIDI and my collections, which is the sounds I like, drums, All right, that's kind of a cool thing. Let's go ahead and load that up on a new track. So this should load up to the right on its own, and that's what it did. And I'm gonna go ahead and click the repeat function because it's just gonna make it exactly to the click. All right, that's super loud, probably for you guys too. So let's go ahead and that down. 
All right. So obviously, here's the hi-hat. I'm noticing you guys don't have it panned left, right, but I have left, right, and that's actually something that can dance around on top. I'm going to talk more about this next week, so stay tuned. Click the like, subscribe, bell icon, get notified when we go live, because at 11 a.m. to 12 p.m., Monday, Wednesday, Saturday, Sunday, we're going to be teaching you for free little tips and tricks from our different studios worldwide. So try and stay tuned, um, and we'll learn a lot more about how to use our digital audio workstations with devices such as the Push 2 here. So here's, I'm in repeat mode. That's blinking, telling me that. I'm on eighth note. I can change that. That hi-hat to me sounds a little aggressive. I'm just going to wonder if there's a different kind. I kind of like using those together. So what I kind of like to do is be able to create a phrase right away. So this is kind of showing a two-bar phrase. These are measures. And right away, I'm going to go ahead and try and play these two. And I don't even need to click on because this is already too grid because of the repeat function. Clear. So now that's a pretty short two-bar phrase. I want to make that a little bit more interesting with some of the high end. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this twice as long. Actually, you know what? I'm going to double the loop. That's what I meant to do. So this is, this is where that, that, that repeat doesn't have to be there anymore. I already have the general beat taking repeat off, and now I'm going to play kind of the high end on the sampling rack that I just imported. Now, if you want to change the volume of any individual thing, you can. You go into the device. We'll bring that volume down so I can talk to you guys a little bit easier over the top of this. So you can go into the device and all of a sudden you have your whole kit here. And here's a jazz guitar. You can actually change the pitch. Cool. I like I like that general area. You can also add devices within any part of your sound. So I go into my effects and I go to utility. This is a general easy way to do panning. And gain structures. So right away that's a little bit quieter. You also have your, your gain per sound right here, too. All 
All right. And then on your master channel or wherever you want to put it, you also can put DJ effects and start mixing it. So basic beat, we're gonna bring that up and play along with it a little bit. So that one doesn't really start where I want it. You can actually go in and customize the start point and the end point. it as easy as pressing quantize I actually don't really like that quantize so I'm gonna keep it there and yeah some really cool things you can do here also help you with that too, right? Going back to this view. So session view is showing this scene. And then going back to one where there's just drums. So one cool thing that I'm going to do in the coming weeks here, every Wednesday, 11 to 12, is I'm going to be creating music with you guys and answering questions you guys may have around what to do, what not to do, and uh, how to improvise within the realm of the Digital Audio Workstation. I love this quote that I saw somewhere recently where it says that the introduction of the computer to music is such a revelation with music. It's similar to the gut string, right? Back in the Bach, Beethoven, the classical revolution days. So that's really what's happening here is electronics are allowing us to create music and take it from the digital world and actually create some human effects from that. Okay, There's a lot of ways you can actually create a digital sound and then make it sound like a real human and um, just have a lot of fun with creating tracks and Programming, it really gets into programming, honestly, and you can start connecting your sounds to lighting, etc. There's a lot of cool programs within Ableton, and then there's also VSTs that, that connect to your DAW that also help you out. Once again, my name is Justin Anchetta, and I am um, 
the owner with Alex Scammon of the SF branch of Garnish Music Production. And the larger conglomerate has eight locations worldwide. We have online and in-person lessons worldwide. And people that are part of our academy actually get access to the other locations. So you can literally you know, sign up in San Francisco and fly to London and sit in on classes out there, fly to New York, Nashville, etc. So I don't know what other electronic music production school has things like that going on. We are also building an online community and a Garnish Music Network. And we'd love to see you on our Discord channels, our Slack channel, uh, our Twitch page. If you haven't signed up and subscribed to these things yet, our YouTube page, please do so. And please check us out at sf.garnishmusicproduction.com. Thank you to the larger conglomerate Dave Garnish, edu.garnishmusicproduction.com for hosting this event. We're going to be doing this every Wednesday from 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. And my name is Justin, signing off. I'll see you again next week, y'all. Take care.